أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Brothers and sisters in the faith, today is a continuation of the khutbah we did last week. We did mention a few verses. Um, one of the Muslim women, her name is Umama bint Haris, gave to her daughter before the wedding. And we did mention nine. But the last one, which is the tenth, she asked her daughter, do not spread the secret of your husband. And this goes to both gender. They go to men, they go to women as well. And one of the evil things that is you know spread in the our community, particularly among the youth, whatever passed between them and their wife and all between them and their husband at home, in the house, in the room, they will spread them. But I got bad news for you. If you go, if you are a woman, and you go and tell your friends what passed between you and your husband in the room, the thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make a secret, guess what? That your friend you tell it, either they will fall in love with your husband because the way you praise your husband, what they doing, what he doing to you, or he might pray or he might wish for you, for you, for your relationship to be collapsed. So that is why it is not advisable for you to go sit down in somewhere among your friends or your relatives and started telling them what passed between you and your husband in the room. The thing Allah has made a secret. The difference between us as a human and the animals is this. We do the relationship, whatever the intercourse we do it, we do it indoors, secretly. But the animals, animal meet, a dog meet, another dog, in the street, they do whatever they want to do. They have, the jinn do too. The jinn men see the jinn woman in the street, they claim they do whatever. And what makes it even worse, nowadays the women enjoy one evil character, and the men they enjoy one of the evil character. Somebody living in East Africa, another living in West America, they use the video and exposing themselves to each other. Naked yourself, strip naked, and, and think that that's the only way you can express your love to your partner. It can be your fiancé, it can be whosoever. But if that person is your fiancé, guess what? That relationship might collapse at a time. And you know how many people will see that loot or strip photos or videos? Do you know that? Are you comfortable for you one day that the relationship will be sour or maybe for some reason the man will not marry you or the woman will not be, you know, change her mind and then you already expose your whole entire body on the video camera, you know, to that person. And out of anger, she will spread, she will, you know, share it with millions of people. How will you feed it? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you want to show to your wife that you love her, there is so many ways to do it, not to expose yourself. That is not acceptable in this field. And one of the advice the woman gave is part of the tenth. And be very, very careful. Anytime you know your wife, I mean your husband is mad, or he's moody, or he grieves. Don't use that time to be celebrating. And we see it here in Philadelphia every now and then. Trust me, we got some information, you know, reliable information, that someone who was even grieving because he lost his mom, and while people are sympathizing with that one, she is well dressed, put a cologne on her, and dress and go to dance. 
how will you feel? Is that part of the marriage? That is, that means you don't have no feeling for that person no more. And then you know, when you know that very well, that your husband is happy, he's in a joyous mood, he got promotion a job, he's doing something good for himself. Don't use that opportunity to, to, to follow your face and get mad at home. This kills the spirit of both men and women. Like I said, it go to both all of us. It go to men as well, it go to women as well. Don't use the time your partner, your spouse is mad to use that as a time of celebration. That's what I'm trying to say. And don't, don't, don't use the time of your partner, your, your spouse, grievance. Don't use that opportunity to make a celebration. When he said, use that chance to decide at work. Sympathize, be around him. Wipe his dear. That's what he called partner. And then when he's celebrating, when he's rejoicing, use that opportunity, whatever grievances, whatever issue you have with him, put that aside and then celebrate with him. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the wasiyah, this is the advice for a woman. This woman said this one before the Araba of Islam, the call it era of ignorance, al jahiliya she said that but what let's go to our mothers and go to our aunties and go to our sisters what are you what is the advice you give it to your daughter nowadays when she's going to intermarry and the biggest mistake some of them do they're going to marry in order to alleviate the economic status of the family you're going to the marriage you're not going there to go have a stable family no they're going there to go enrich themselves to get more money, you know, they're not going there to start to, like Rasulullah Sama said, You're not going to marry to say, Oh, let me born children that will be the, you know, like the, the, the Ummah of the Rasulullah Sama. They're not going there for that. They're going there for economic reason. Quote unquote. They're going there for economic reason. I mean, you're going to cut him into marry, you're going there so you can able to look for your money. You get one or two or three children. And then as soon as you get that, then you use problem at home. Whatever you, your husband used to be sharing, joking, thing, those days is gone. All you do right now, you do you threatening her. I mean, you threatening him. Or if you're with a man, you threatening her too. Or for that whole. That is not healthy. If we complaining in our community that we have a problem of gun violence, we have a problem with our children, let's start with our family first. If the husband and wife are in a cordial relationship, the home is peaceful. Trust me, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahi the family will be peaceful. And when the family is peaceful, the community is peaceful. When the community is peaceful, then that means the whole community, I mean the whole generation will be peaceful. So let's start home. Let's start our home right from home. All this violence, gun violence, all this problem will be eliminated if we establish a good relationship. Unfortunately, our community would not have nothing. We will look at one person struggling when he's married, nobody will be there to assist him. All they do is choo -choo 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 -choo, running their mouth everywhere. When they see this one, they talk. When they see the man, they talk something that the man want to hear. When they see the woman, they say something that the woman want to hear. But guess what? Nobody will take the initiative, be a the community members, be the community leader, be a the opinion leader, somebody who will volunteer, or the group of people will volunteer and say, oh, you know what, we need to arrest this situation. So having said that, we have come to the uh, first break. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Kareem wa fi sunnat al-Nabihi al-Mutakhara wa jalani wa iyaakum mimman yastanguna al-Qawla fa yattanguna ahsanahu aqoola ma samaitu wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisaayir al-Muslimin wa li-Muslimat wa kul zan fa astaghfiru wa inna kul baku rahim. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabihi al-Mustafa. This, to wrap this whole, you know, uh, uh, something around, you know, I have uh, this advice for, the, for we the men. We the men, we have to use the wisdom. 
we, I'm not trying to, you know, trying to say that I'm stressing on only the men. No, you have to use a wisdom to run a family. Don't be seeking for, a, you know, like a my right, my right, my right. Then the family will collapse. By the time the woman grew up and she realized the family is messed up. Look at Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul and his wife Aisha was in the house. Both of them were together. Only two of them were in the room. Aisha said, Rasul, among all your women, who do you like, who do you love more? Rasul said, I love you more. So he, she said, okay, I trust you, I believe you, but I want you, when all the women around, you must say that one. I think they would be very embarrassing too. I mean, we all know that. I got nine wives, and all of them, as you said, all of them down and say, oh yeah, uh, you, this one, this is the one that I love more than other people. It's, it's kind of difficult situation. But Rasul used the wisdom. That's why I'm saying this one. And Rasul went in the bathroom. When he came back, he took one tamar and he gave it to Aisha. Tomorrow, I'm going to call all the women. Make sure you keep this one tamar here. It's a date. So, and what Rasul did again, when the day break before they meet, he told the other women, say, oh, I want to meet all of you today after Zuhur prayer. And then he went to the other woman, he gave her one tamar. He went to the other woman too, he gave her, he said, don't tell nobody that I gave you any tamar. And he, he, you know, he went to each and every one of them and gave each one of them a one one tamar. And then he called all of them. He said, today I'm going to make an announcement. The woman that I love, among all my wives, the one I love best is the one that I gave Tamaru to. Aisha don't know if Arasul gave Tamaru to another person. And the other one, Hafsa don't know if Arasul gave Tamaru to another person. And all of them started rejoicing, say yes, thank God. Rasul loved me more than all the other women because he gave me Tamaru. What a lesson we get out of this one. You have to use a wisdom. But Rasul is not someone who can lie. He gave Tamar to Aisha. He gave Tamar to Hafsha. He gave Tamar to all these But all of them, they don't, don't even know that he gave Tamar to anybody. Because he told them, no, don't ever tell anybody that I gave you Tamar. But I'm going to announce it that the person who I gave Tamar to, the person I love more. What this one taking us to? It tells us that we should use a wisdom. We should use our common sense. Use that to, to, you know, to navigate. To run family wisely. If you do that, your house will be in peace. Don't try to say you be very, very harsh at all times. Have to say that, you know, I have to stop right here. I don't know what's the time right now. You know, uh, you know, so many things to say about the man and woman relationship. But uh, if you use that wisdom, you know, and you want to be, if you use a wisdom, trust me, you will hold that family and you will run the family wisely and then the family will be in peace. Even if the woman put cockroaches of food, according to Rasul Rasul's Rasul wife, Aisha said that Rasul never condemned no food. Your wife go cook some kind of food with too much salt. Me, I don't like salt. I even tell my wife, I say, please don't ever cook salt. You know. But the food, for some reason, the food is not delicious. Rasul will not condemn it. If he, so he will, he, sometimes he will say, oh yeah, I'm full right now, I will eat it later. But he will not say, oh, why are you complaining the food? Pepe, why you complain if, you know, short, you know, you turning her off. Don't never you do that. Women need to be pet. I said it before and I'm saying it again to conclude this good part. Women need, they are like a kids. You know, the same way you can treat your little son and your daughter. Please, if you pet, pet that woman, I'm not a, a married therapist, but this is something from experience. Talk to her nicely. Treat her nicely, call her, say, I love you. And then if you see, says something that you don't like, use appropriate time to calm her and explain to her better. If you do that, then you, the man, will take the credit. Because, oh, yeah, this man, house, this is man, it's a family man. This man is only important. When you make an issue of everything, all the time, the whole world here about the conflict in your home, that shows that you are not ready. But guess what? I got bad news for you when you divorce this one. With, because of some kind of character, the new one you come in, she will display a character that even worse than the other one. 
So you will be changing woman to woman to woman to woman. You don't want to go do that. Having said that, I would like to stop there today. And I hope the men there will not feel that are taking side with the women. And I hope the women there will not even feel that are taking side with the men as well. So this is, the, I, 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 I mean, the, I'm standing here where Arasul Salaam was standing. Anybody stand at the member is standing where Arasul Salaam was So we don't, you know, hesitate to tell the people what Arasul Salaam did or what he said or he did. So having said that, I've come to the new al -Qutba. اللهم إني داء فأمنوا اللهم لا تداء لنا في مقامنا هذا زنب إلا غفرته ولا حما إلا فريته ولا دين إلا قليته اللهم أغفر لنا والإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك الرقور